For some time now, I have been experimenting with different types of media format cameras. Well, and the reason for that is because I'm trying to find out which media format camera is best for my style of photography. Of course, not an easy thing to do since there are so many, but I've been trying, well, SLRs, uh, rangefinders, viewfinders. But one type which has been eluding me is the TLR or Twin Lens Reflex Camera. Until recently, that is, when I found this Yashica A in the flea market, when I was just randomly walking around looking for cameras, which I do now and then. But I'm, I mean, I usually don't find that many interesting cameras, and mostly there are like pocket cameras from different generations when you go to the flea markets. So this is quite a good find actually, and it's a very good condition, and also the price was very good. So we have to say it's the best camera I've found so far camera drifting. Probably the most well-known Yashica TLRs are the Yashica Mat. This Yashica A is a bit older generation than that. And there's also one more older generation, the Yashica Flex. But in any case, it's a uh, very basic TLRs and part of the same generation. There's also the Yashica B, C and D. So the D is like the most advanced one. And with that one, you can find the Yashinon 2.8 uh, 80mm lens, which is also a four element lens. So that was definitely image quality wise the best one. But this one is not bad either. It has a triplet lens, a, either a Yashi Core or a Yashi Mar, which this one has. And they're like 3.5, 80 millimeter. There are other differences, uh, mostly like quality of life things. For example, when advancing, you have to use the red window on this camera and there is no double exposure prevention. So you have to be careful with that. Another thing which is probably different is the viewfinder. This one is a bit dark. I don't know how it is on the BCD camera. So yeah, but it can be a bit dark on this one. If you compare this one to cheaper TLRs, for example, the Soviet Lubitschel series, well, in that case, I would say this one is much better because I have tried that one, I think the number two, and well, it doesn't feel as well made and it's a bit not as easy to use or like, let's say straightforward. So this one is definitely a good intro to uh, TLRs, I think, or also even to medium format, since you can get it for quite a good price, like under 100 euros. So far, I have shot uh, two rolls of Formapan 100 Classic with this camera, and the results, well, image quality wise, they are, it's quite good actually. If I would compare it to another media format camera I have, the Tysico Netar, I have to say that the Netar has a bit sharper lens, a little bit, but that lens is on the other hand a 4.5, 75 millimeter. Yeah, overall the image quality is quite good. I mean, it's not super sharp like a Hasselblad or anything. You wouldn't expect that from this kind of camera, but yeah, as an experimentation or introduction to medium format is quite good, I would say. Right, so let's have a closer look at the Yashica A TLR. So this camera came with this leather case and well, it's not in the best condition. For example, this, uh, actually I did this damage by mistake. It rips very easily in this direction because this is where it folds. But it's quite common for these leather cases not be in very good condition. It seems to be mostly quite, quite okay still this part of the leather case. The distinctive feature of a TLR is of course the twin lenses. You have the lens which you take the picture with and the lens which you view through. And uh, the advantage of this is that you get a quite big, I mean, quite big viewfinder, you can get quite good focus with it also. One disadvantage of the TLRs is a parallax error, which means that the closer you get to your subject, the more different the views will be from the lenses. So things might not line up very well if you focus on something very close. You can either use this at the waist level, like this, uh, or you also have this uh, magnifier which you can fold out. So you can look more precisely when focusing. And I prefer to use this, uh, this fold out finder when, when using this camera to get more precise focus. The viewfinder on this camera though has a big problem is that it is very dark or it has a lot of vignetting. In the middle, you can sort of see what you're looking at, but when you go out to the corner, it becomes very dark very quickly. And it's one thing <laughs> I don't like about it because it makes it more, more difficult to line up your shot and also to focus. I mean, if it's in the middle, it's usually fine, but if you have something in the corner, it's a bit, I mean, difficult to see what you're doing there. So that's one disadvantage with this camera. Another thing to keep in mind is that the view in this is mirrored. So it makes it also a bit more like difficult to line up the shot. But I guess that is something you can get used to. The settings of the cameras are all set here on the front. You have the shutter, which goes from uh, L25 to 300 plus bulb. And the aperture goes from L3.5 to 22. 
I would say that the amount of shutter speeds is enough, like 100 and 300 is what I use usually when hand holding it. Maybe you can get away with 50, I have not tried that, I have only used that on a tripod. And before you can press the shutter button, which is here, you have to load up the shutter. A few times I have caused the camera to shake a little bit too much by pressing this a bit too fast. You have to press this all the way to the bottom before the, the photo, I mean before the shutter fires. So, and one negative thing about this camera is that this thing, I mean the shutter button, uh, does not have the standard uh, attachment for a release cable, for a remote release cable. So you have to use some kind of weird like a nipple or something and yeah, I don't know, they're not that easy to find. The focusing is done here on this side. You have the knob and when you turn it, you can see that the two lenses move in and out. And as long as this has been aligned properly in the factory, I mean, I don't know if you need to, or how often you actually need to calibrate this, but the, the sharpness has been quite spot on with this camera. I mean, it has been where I have focused it. And this knob here, which is not to be confused with the focus, is the advance for the film. And this is one potential problem with this camera. I mean, I imagine it can maybe happen if you mix these two together. It did not happen. In, in the rolls I've shot with the camera. So I don't know if it's, it is actually a problem, but it's something to keep keep in mind. Do not grab this when you want to focus, because then you <laughs> advance the film by mistake. Well, you'll lose some space on the film. It's not the end of the world. When you advance the film, you have to look through this window. There is no stop or anything. It goes forever, which means you can do how many uh, double exposures or multi exposures you want. And sometimes this happened by mistake and that's well, that's something you also get used to when using this type of camera that you should not, I mean, you should always, after you take the shot, you should immediately advance to the next frame if you want to avoid the accidental double exposure. Let's uh, remove this case and uh, have a look inside the camera and you remove the case by lifting these two on the side and then you take out the camera and be aware of the knobs. I have some clearance from those, there's one there also. Uh -huh. And then once you have it off, I mean, it's quite nice looking on this side and it can, you can use this and have it also stand on a surface like that. And it's not the most stable surface, but it shows the concept. And then uh, for loading the film or first of all, for opening the back, you have to screw this and it will move this part up and you can lift the back or open the back. Loading film into this camera is quite easy. You start by taking this uh, knob and lifting it and turning it so it stays lifted like this. And you take out the old spool from the old film and then also lift up this knob here. Then you move it into the uptake. And move this knob back down and rotate it to see that it's properly seated. Then you take your film and I'm using the backing paper for, of an old film because this uh, video light is quite strong so I don't want to risk losing a film <laughs> because of this. Um, I'd rather use it for something and this is something to keep in mind when loading medium format is that you should not uh, do this in very strong light like sunlight because the light can seep in through this like uh, around the backing paper if if you're unlucky. In any case, after you open the film, make sure to keep some uh, pressure on it so you don't let it loose. And then put it into its place. Uh, let's see. Yes, and then just move this down. Move the film, film over to the uptake spool uh, while keeping some pressure on it also, so it doesn't unravel itself by mistake. Also good to keep some pressure on this, otherwise it might not take it, I mean, take it up properly, but yeah, here we go. All right, and then you just move the start so it comes to the red window, so you can see where you are. Close the back again and move 
the film until you get to the first frame. Anywhere here now, yeah, the dots, there's one. And I went a bit too far, but <laughs> it doesn't matter so much. But overall, I have to say, there's nothing really strange about this camera. It's quite standard operation for cameras of this time. And I don't think you can break it by mistake, at least not by normal operation. Yeah, quite a nice camera to use. Let's look at some photos. Right, so my reason for getting the Yashica ATLR was that I could try out the server camera and I think I got quite a good idea how it is to use one. And well, to sum up my experiences, well, first I have some negative points and that is mostly about the viewfinder. It's a bit, I mean it's mirrored and you have to look down into it, so it becomes a bit awkward to compose your shots and find, I mean find straight lines. So that's a little bit of a struggle. It's not that fast, you just really have to slow down, which of course can also be a good thing but it's a bit too much slow down, I think, sometimes. One thing I'm not too bothered about though is the size. I mean, it's actually not that bad. It's not a problem. It's a box, but it's quite good to hold. Overall, I have to say I like the TLR. I mean, one very good thing is that you have the leaf shutter and no moving mirror while still having a quite big viewfinder. For example, over a rangefinder, this is a big advantage to have more like exact frame. I mean, bigger framing. <laughs> it's not really more exact than a rangefinder, sort of the same, same when it comes to exactness. But in any case, if you are curious about the TLRs, the Yashica A is definitely a good uh, option for that. And also, I mean, if you get, in general, just get the chance to use a TLR, definitely try them out because they're quite fun cameras to use. And they also have the advantage of looking quite cool, so that's not bad either. <laughs> but I think this is all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!